This is CSS, which just builds upon the HTML that we've already been learning. In CSS, you you don't just have inline formatting like style equals red. You would instead create a class for each um, element that you want to use, and then you can use that class over and over again. Like I was saying about the error message, you would have class equals error, and then you can use that on as many pages as you want to, and you create uh, a style sheet that has the formatting in it that says for, for dot error, let's say the color is red and it's bold and it's this font size or this font color or whatever. And that's and then that you can you can put this on the same HTML page or you can actually save this into a separate document called something.css. Like in this case it's default.css under Visit Florida. And then this applies all of the pages include this one. And so all of your formatting is in one page for your entire site, which okay. saves a lot of time when you want to change some formatting around. The downside of it is it starts getting really complicated having everything in the same file because mm. this is for this is for Visit Florida, which has many many pages on it. This probably should be broken up into a series of smaller CSS files. But the idea is the same. You've got all of this different formatting. So here's um, so for a certain mouse over effects, you might have a different kind of cursor on it or you know different height or width that sort of thing. Could you break it into like associate the, the CSS with a, a set of page types? Yes, in that case you would, the way to call a CSS file is, if I can get back to it, actually I was looking at Miles Medias, um, I'll get into this in a minute, but, but you can define that CSS file within your HTML document, which ones to call, and so you can have one, if you have one for listings pages on a site, you can have listings.css and only call it on those pages, okay. but not on others, so you can do that. Um, it's useful if you have um, different color themes for different sections, so beaches are red and so on. Sounds like bad tourism poetry, right? Beaches are red and <laughs> family pages are blue. And, uh, um, Come to Florida, we love you. Yes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's early for poetry. <laughs> we've, all of the HTML that we've been writing so far has been just tags in a page. To do a properly formatted and properly structured pages, you need some outer containers for that. So you'd want to actually start with the HTML tag and end with an HTML tag. Everything in the page should be contained within this. Um, you also want to have, this is getting a little technical, but your page should be properly formatted, should have a doc type declaration. This simply tells the browser what kind of HTML formatting it is. In this case, it's HTML1. Um, I'm telling you this to be clear that that is officially part of a properly formatted page, but don't worry about it. I'm going to get into what all that is. Um, within an HTML document, you have two parts of the page. You have the head, which contains information about the page. You have the body, which contains all of the actual content that's on the page. So all of the HTML that we've been writing so far would go inside of the body. So let's just say we have Miles Media written on the page. How do you set things like the overall elements of the page, for instance, the page title? Well, you set them up in the head. So let's give this a title of MMG. And so now currently the page title is just the file name up here. Now that I've changed it, MMG becomes the page title up here. So that's how you control uh, that element, which is important for search engines and just frankly important in the browser to see it up there and when you bookmark it and so on. Um, you can also, you've, for those of you who have worked in SEO, you know all about uh, keywords and description. These are fields for uh, search engines. Um, they read these. Um, you would put these up in the head of the page. Um, if you're going to call a separate CSS file, you would create a link tag, which goes right up here again in the head of the, of the document, which has um, the name of the CSS file defined as href and um, rel equals style sheet. You don't necessarily need to have these, but proper formatting. And all those are not visible, right? I'm sorry? All those are not visible? Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Anything that's in the head of the document will only appear, will be part the, the browser will interpret it as part of the document, but it won't actually display it on the screen. This is also where you would put certain elements if you want a page to automatically refresh. Um, you can create one that does that. We were talking about this one earlier, last week. This page may have looked a little intimidating at the time, but now that you know how tables work, 
probably doesn't look too bad. It's it's one table with one nested table inside of it. It's not that complicated of a page. And this has a refresh on it every 900 seconds, which I think is every 15 minutes. This automatically refreshes to itself the same URL. Um, and that's because there's new content appearing on the page. This was set up for uh, people to Twitter at the uh, governor's conference a few days ago. So that's an example of something you can put up in the head of the document. There's many, many kinds of meta tags that you can put on there that produce different effects. Um, you can you can load um, JavaScript up here in the head of the page. If for whatever reason you need to do that, that's where it goes. Um, you can actually define the JavaScript script right there, or you can simply call a separate uh, JS file, which I don't think there's any examples here, but, but the JavaScript is defined up in the top. So that's that's the reason why we have added in the body. Any questions? No. Um, if you are not using CSS to define overall elements of the page, you can put things here in the body tag that will define it. Um, background color of the page. Let's make it um, say a light blue color. can be maintained, but normally everything that appears, when you create a CSS document, here it is, um, you can define units for the overall page, but mostly everything you're going to define is in body. So that's why you have, again, the body tag and everything fits within that. Questions at all? Okay, um, a few more aspects I'll get into briefly. If you uh, want to pull off a few more tricks in HTML, um, there is a tag called pre-tag. You don't see this too often. It's, uh, it has its purposes. Pre is pre-formatting. It won't apply any special formatting to the, to the information whatsoever. And it will display it in a font, usually courier new, which is... Um, the same size for every single letter. So an I is the same size as an M. And this is useful if you're trying to draw a chart and have everything spaced out a certain amount. Put it in a giant block of pre um, and it will be properly spaced. Another one that can be useful is block quote. You sometimes see a quotation on a website that is indented just as sort of like a nested paragraph within others. That will take, if you have uh, a series of paragraphs and one of them you want to highlight or you want to make special somehow, put a block quote around it, it will indent it on both sides and produce this effect and also put a gap above and below it, um, sort of calling attention to it. It's really pretty useful. We should probably use that in the uh, articles. Escape characters are important if you need to put a special character on a page. Um, for instance, what do you do if you actually want to put a less than symbol on the page? If you start to do that, then HTML is going to interpret that as a tag. And so that's where you need to get into special characters, and you may have seen these in a few places. Um, they usually take the form of, uh, in fact, they always take the form of an ampersand to begin it, and a semicolon to end it, and then whatever within it. So in this case, we have um, less than b greater than looks a little complicated, but the effect is you're actually <laughs> drawing that character on the screen. So that's how you put that up there if anybody's okay. curious. The thing about HTML and, and transferring files across the web is that character sets are not universal. And if you're declaring a doc type at the top, you can declare what the, what the character set is going to be, or you can define it in, in the head of your document. But even then, browsers don't always interpret it the same way. And so the recommendation is for any kind of special character, if you just want to put a hyphen in there, just, just hit a hyphen. But if you want to have an extended one... All right, I love giving awful examples. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to another one that I wrote down here as an example, the one that you might want to use. How about copyright? If you want to put in a copyright symbol. Nice. Page. That one, all right. 